In this video, we'll learn how to successfully paint and assemble resin and etch based kits, and around these elements, create a 60s style construction site. Hello, and welcome to another video tutorial. Yo, I got a, a Facebook message from a, a lady in Germany called Christiane Müller. Here she is. She's uh, not only doing miniature modeling, but also carnivals. On this carnival, she was the heart queen. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, she's just got it started on like laser cut kits. Uh, and uh, she also wanted to build this Bishop uh, Polytrack tractor or, or, or excavator. But she was kind of hesitant if she you know, would succeed with the assembly and the paintwork because the resin uh, kits seems to be a bit more complicated uh, when it comes to those parts. Uh, so I, I, I got hold of one of these uh, kits from Artitech uh, and I said to her, let's, let's make a video on this. Uh, maybe there are many people out there who's uh, you know, thinking of how to assemble a resin kit properly. Uh, I don't know if I do it properly, <laughs> but it's anyway uh, some uh, starting point for you. So, uh, Christiana, here comes the instruction video. Okay, so here's the kit we're talking about. It's a Bishop Polytrack with Grab. This kit is made by Artitech and available from their web shop. I'm putting up a link in the upper right hand corner to the Artitech web shop where you can read more about the kit and also about this fantastic machine. The kit includes the resin part, etched parts and decals plus a detailed assembly instruction. So here's the molded machine body in resin. Most resin parts has a thin invisible layer of release agent all over. The release agent is necessary in production to be able to remove molded part from the tool. However, this release agent will also efficiently prevent paint from sticking properly onto the resin, so it needs to be removed. It's easy using soap, water and toothbrush. The first thing we will do is to trim away some of the mold burrs. The burr is removed by sanding or trimmed away using a scalpel. Once all the parts has been trimmed, it's time for some painting. I use a piece of 4mm plywood as a mixing board for the paint. This first layer of paint, which will cover everything, consists from a 50-50 mix from black 33 and brown 62. This mix will be thinned using turpentine. Turpentine is a really excellent thinner for this type of paints, but it smells a bit bad. So one good idea could be to paint under the fan in the kitchen or outside. I'm then adding the thinner in the edge of the pool of paint. And you see how the paint mixes into the thinner. The mix should be thin enough not to leave any marks after the brush. I use a barbecue stick with a sticky rubber on top to fix the objects I'm painting. As said previously, this first layer acts as a primer, so we can use acrylic paints on top of this if we like later, the thin paint will also highlight all of the details in the casting, which will show through the yellow top coat later and add variance in the color tone. Now leave these parts to dry properly overnight. Let's start the assembly. Now the instruction sheet tell me to drill 0.4 mm holes ahead of assembling these etched parts. I don't really see the need for that, since I will not ship or handle the, this model very much after assembly. Plus, there are already small assembly holes in the casting. This superglue from Pacer Technology is probably the best superglue I've ever tested. It also has a bit of a filling ability, so the fit doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, here comes the hydraulic valves, one on each side, and the steering wheel. Yeah, cool. I assemble most of the tiny parts using a tweezer. I find that kind of easy. Here comes the boom now, which attach both to the hydraulic levers, cylinders, and to the body. Next is to fold this uh, 
grabber boom from the etched parts. Once folded, it's fixed with glue. Excessive glue is removed using a cotton swab. I then fix the two hydraulic hoses on top. The grab also needs the hoses. Right, and then assembly. I will stop the assembly at this point and now cover it all with the yellow paint. For this layer you have a number of different options. I'm using the Humbrol 24 which is a yellow solvent based paint. The advantage with this one is that it can be applied using a paintbrush with a very nice looking result. But I'm using an airbrush for this paint work. If you instead choose acrylic paints, I would definitely advise you to use an airbrush to get a uniform yellow coat. I ended up with three layers of paint, which gave a nice yellow surface. Both the rims, the black tires and the other details are painted using acrylic paint and a paintbrush. I used black for the tires. It's a Vallejo 7950 black, matte black. I keep some of that black still on my mixing board to make a wash. The wash should go over the engine vents here. So I'm adding a lot of thinner and burnt umber, so I get a kind of dark brown wash over the engine vent. Once everything dried, it's time for some decaling. I put the decal sheet into a bin of water like this. It's quite possible also to just brush on water on the backside of the decal sheet. I move the decal from the decal sheet to the model using a paint brush. I use the same brush also to absorb the excessive amount of water on and around the decal. Now let the decal dry properly before next step, which is the weathering. For the body I use a Burnt Umber 7941 from Vallejo, it's an acrylic paint. I dip the paintbrush into the paint and then wipe most of it off on a piece of paper. Then I just gently in vertical streaks apply this on the areas where I find that the dirt should be, like on these support legs for instance. The tires are instead dry brushed with grey or light brown paint. Let's now instead move over to the construction site. I'm modeling this on a piece of plywood which snaps into my landscape like a snap-in diorama. This way the landscape can be modified over time. Another great advantage with the snap-in system is that every detail can be made at the table rather than standing over the layout. Each module is supported by a wooden framework. I will come back to this in a later tutorial. The first work order for my Bishop Poly track is to dig a ditch. So I make a cutout from this plywood and then I make the depth of the ditch using styrofoam, which is glued in place using PVA glue, wood glue. With the ditch in place, I glue a piece of styrofoam in the rear end of the diorama, which represents the height of the ground in the rear end. I model most of my ground using a concrete based plaster. In my area this is called Hus Fix. It's really nothing special, it's something you use in house when you have cracks you need to fill in the wall. The mixing formula for this powder is 4 parts powder and 1 part water. Then it's just to plaster and give that ground the shape you are looking for. This plaster is somewhat corrosive, so it's kind of nasty to your fingers. So if you're sensitive to that, use gloves. Uh, otherwise, just wash your fingers afterwards. All right, I'm kind of happy with the shape now. So I'm just putting some magic scenery dust, which is just uh, sorted sand. You can also use Shinsilla sand, which is available in the stores. The purpose with this layer is just to give uh, texture, surface texture, which is close to a gravel road. And then I take one of the tires from the kit and make track marks like this. Yeah. 
The first layer of paint will be a light brown color, which I mix from burnt umber, black and white acrylic paint. I cover the entire diorama with this brown paint first and then leave that to dry. After that we're applying a dark brown wash. This is just a mix from burnt umber and black, no white and a lot of thinner. I start by applying the wash in the lower areas, meaning track marks and lower ground where it's, you know, you can anticipate that it should be a bit more wet. And then I add a second layer over the entire diorama to enhance contours and increase the contrast. Again, leave that to dry properly and then it's time to make a light brown color with this we will dry brush and highlight some of the texture on this uh, diorama. See here uh, the track marks is highlighted, looks kind of good, kind of happy with this. Now a time for some green turf. I'm starting off by applying some PVA glue, a thin layer where I want my turf. This is Woodland Scenic Earth Blend. And I put this on, sprinkle it on unevenly on the glued areas. And it's time for some green blend, also from Woodland Scenic. I do this on the lower parts of the diorama lower ground when you would think it's uh, more moist in the ground. Time for the static grass. So again I apply PVA glue around where I want the static grass. Starting off with a low style grass. This is a 2.5 millimeter grass green blend and then I make turfs of a taller kind of beige grass. This is a six millimeter tall grass. With the grass in place it's time to place that worker trailer. Uh, I think it's good to have one object already in the diorama when you start placing bushes and trees because it gives a bit of proportions of how how big a structure is so you can adapt the bushes and trees to to that height. I was also thinking to have some action here on the construction site of the negative kind meaning a water filled ditch with drain water from a broken pipe. So this time I'm using a two component water gel from Noch there should be equal amounts of these two components and they should first be mixed thoroughly each and then mixed into a bowl. Mix the two components together by stirring it uh, at least a minute. When mixing is complete this uh, gel is like water, a very thin liquid which is not very suitable to pour because it's a big risk that uh, the water will rise along the edges and also in between like if you have twigs or something else in the water so it's a good thing to let it sit and cure for half an hour before you pour it into your scene all right now you see that there are a lot of air bubbles in this uh, water gel and they will actually stay there unless you don't do anything about them. And the best thing you can do is to heat the gel somewhat. I use a hairdryer for that purpose. Uh, you can see here how the bubbles are coming up to the surface and disappearing when I'm heating the gel slightly. Now cover the water area and leave it to dry overnight. Let's now prepare the running drain water which will come from the pipe. I use no water effect for this and I just squeeze out 
a few different uh, strips of this uh, water effect onto a plastic cover I just had laying around and I leave that to dry also overnight. The drain pipe is just a two millimeter brass tubing which I've painted in burnt umber. I fix it in place using the fast set glue. Same thing with the water strip. Then I cut the running water to length. I will now stipple some white acrylic paint around the landing base of this running drain water. So I dip my brush into it and then I just dab some of that off before I stipple it on in a circular pattern around the landing base of that drain water. Now next thing is to apply some water effect on top of this to give the ripples of on the water. The white acrylic paint will also be kind of dissolved into the water effect and rise a bit into the water effect so it will look a bit foamy when we're done. So I'm adding the ripples or the waves from the landing water onto the water surface and I will fade them slightly with a brush. So I'm stippling with a brush like this. Oh yeah, starting to look good. The water effect looks a bit white before it has cured properly. Once cured it will be fully transparent if, if it hasn't blended with a white paint of course because then there will be an amount of white paint in the water effect as well. Now it's just to glue those workers in place. This first one is just oh man and the foreman he's angry. Hey guys <laughs> a broken pipe means a break. That's good. I need a beer. What do you say boss? What did I do wrong? All right and then we're done with our diorama and we snap it into place into the location on the layout. As said earlier, I will have a tutorial on how to set up the framework to have uh, landscape modules like this. Anyway, I think this bishop is a real beauty. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please help others to find this video by giving it a thumbs up and sharing it on your favorite internet forums. If you have any questions at all about the video or anything here, just post it in the comment field below this video and I'll try to respond to that as soon as possible. If this video helps you with your hobby, please remember that all of this is made possible because a few of you viewers are supporting the channel. So if you want to be one of the good guys and uh, contribute to the channel, uh, get onto Patreon and set up a, a support account there from $1 per month. Uh, or make a one-off donation via the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. Please subscribe to the channel and you will get a notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see ya! This video was brought to you in cooperation with Artitech, high-end scale models.